Hi guys, it's Mark Secree, Mr. Sci-Fi, also known as Mark Secree of Space Command. And this is an angle of the, uh, the office you haven't seen before, but I need it for the space because we're going to be talking about some amazing new um, perks we're adding to the Kickstarter campaign. Now we're at the midpoint of the Kickstarter campaign. We've raised $52,000 and thank you for that. And we've also been selling Space Command shares at 7500 bucks each. But as you know, we're ramping up to shoot the rest of uh, the second two-hour story of Space Command, Forgiveness. Uh, we've shot our th hours one, two of Redemption, and three of Forgiveness. Now we have to shoot hour four. So uh, I'm trying to raise about 200000 So we would need on the Kickstarter uh, campaign to clear about 120, 130. They take stuff off the top. So that would allow us to then have 100 clear to shoot. And then on the uh, share side, I'd love to sell enough shares, $100,000 worth of shares, to, again, have 200000 because we're spending money now uh, toward that shoot. We've rented the studio. We've expanded the space. We're building costumes and sets and creatures and the whole nine yards. It's amazing. And meantime, we're completing uh, post-production on hours two and three. So we're really moving along at a good clip. Plus, we're in post-production on the audio play with all of our cast, Doug Jones, Mike Carney, Mira Furlan, Bill Mummy, uh, uh, Bruce Boxleitner. Well, he, he's in, he's in, the, in Redemption, but, but there's also um, Mike Carney in both and, um, and Robert Picardo, of course. So, so I thought at the midpoint of our campaign, I wanted to goose it. I wanted to help get the, the wheels turning uh, better and again. So I went into my uh, catacombs and I found several things that I think you're gonna love. Now, just to be clear, what we're going to provide with all of these things is a, um, a PDF of this material that will be emailed to you, plus a video of me talking in detail about every single item. So this is for, if you're fans of certain shows, this is going to be an amazing once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. This is material you can get nowhere else, absolutely nowhere else. So if you, if you dig what I'm about to talk about, then uh, this is definitely for you. So... The first thing we're going to be offering, again, it's, a, it's duplicates of this material. I recently came across this crate full of stuff. And you may notice that on the top, it says Star Trek. It's a Star Trek time capsule. Star Trek The Next Generation specifically. Because when I was, um, many of you know that I wrote for Next Gen, Star Trek The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine, while I was doing sliders and many other shows. And... Uh, and so the way it would work is I would get materials to come up with ideas, to prep, to learn how to, how to pitch to that specific show. And often I would get materials that the public um, did not have access to. And this is when the shows were on. Now, this is a crate of my Star Trek material. It's a time capsule because I have not opened this or gone through it in over 20 years. But we are going to scan every single thing in here. And if you, if you get the perk that says Star Trek time capsule, you'll get this plus a video of me talking in detail about every single item. It's amazing. So let's just crack it open a little bit and see what's in here. So, okay. So first of all, these were the synopses provided to those writers who were coming into pitch. So these are synopses of all the Star Trek Next Generation episodes written by the Star Trek Next Generation staff. These are Star Trek trading cards that were available around that time that I bought. This actually is something that's quite unusual. This actually came from my childhood, of all things, and we'll, we'll do a scan and I'll talk about this on the video. But if you ever saw the episode Naked Time, they're eating in the mess hall on the Enterprise and one character commits suicide. And, um, and this is the, uh, the knife. This is a, the same style as the knife because they bought this commercially. And so, um, pretty cool, pretty cool. And uh, that's, that dog will not be included in the perk. That dog will not be included. But, um, but beyond that, let's see what else was in here. Um, let's see. I, I, again, ah, let's, this is Certificate of Authenticity, Kirk's uniform, a patch of Kirk's uniform material. Okay, and again, we'll be scanning all of this. I'll be talking about all of it. This is exactly stuff as I put it in this crate more than 20 years ago. This is Star Trek Deep, Sp Deep Space Nine synopses, again, written in-house. This is um, another script, another script. This is, look at this, Star Trek comic book. This was a fanzine written um, earlier about the original Star Trek. All of this stuff, just as, as it lies in here, you, get, you guys will get to have. So, the copies of this. Star Trek Next Generation, Blood and Fire. This is a script David Gerald wrote. This is First Contact. This is the script that was given me of the story that I came up with when they wrote their working draft. This is... Gosh, what is all of this? It's amazing stuff. 
This is uh, from Jaron Summers. He was a writer on Star Trek uh, Phase Two, which was a series that was going to be made in the um, in the seventies. I was interested in, in finding out about this show. Uh, here's another one of the Babel Five. This is probably the first fanzine done about Star Trek. It was done when the original Star Trek was on the air. Uh, let's see what else is in here. Star Trek merchandise catalog from about 20 years ago. Um, let's see what else do we have. Um, this is Where None Has Have Gone Before, which was written by my friend Michael Reeves and Diane Duane. Later, Michael and I uh, co-wrote um, the, uh, the Star Trek New Voyages episode that was nominated for Hugo and the Nebula. So, you know, so there's just amazing things in here, uh, for instance, and it's a mixture of all the different parts of Star Trek that I have. This is, for instance, Shore Leave. This is Ted Sturgeon, my dear friend Ted Sturgeon's script uh, that he wrote for the first season of the original Star Trek. This is, these are translites. When I did um, World Enough in Time, my friends who worked on Star Trek sent me these original graphics, copies of these original graphics from uh, Star Trek The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine. Here's the souvenir program book from when I was nominated for the Hugo and the Nebula for World Enough in Time. So we'll be, you know, scanning all of this, sending it all to you. Here's the uh, Writer's Bible for Star Trek Phase 2, the show that never got made. This is uh, a copy of City on the Edge of Forever that Harlan Ellison signed to me. If you look at, there it is. He signed this copy of uh, City on the Edge of Forever, the amazing script. So this is stuff from Voyager, DS9, Next Generation, the original Star Trek, all sorts of stuff. So we'll scan it, and then we'll do a video of me talking about all of this. And, uh, and you know, it, uh, it'll be an amazing thing, a, a Star Trek lover's dream. Now, also, we're going to be offering a perk of my uh, outline and my original pitch for Far Beyond the Stars. And again, that will be a PDF with me talking about it, how I came to come up with Far Beyond the Stars, what influenced me. And then uh, we're also going to do a perk on... Um, all of the pitches that I made to Star Trek The Next Generation, DS9, um, uh, Voyager, the Enterprise, that weren't sold. And you can see sometimes I would be recalibrating certain things as the pitching went on, because I pitched to many iterations of Star Trek The Next Generation. The first year, producers were being fired left and right. So I pitched to uh, many of them. I pitched to David Gerald. I pitched to uh, Tracy Torme. I pitched to about four or five of them, um, Bert Armas. And and they would always want to buy at least one or more of my stories that I pitched, and then they would be fired before they could actually complete the purchase. So finally, Michael Pillar came on the show, and that allowed me to sell something to them. So, th so that'll also be a perk. It'll be all my Star Trek pitches that have never been seen publicly by anyone. So it's stories about Riker and Geordi and Picard and um, Quark and on and on, Seven of Nine, etc. It'll be really fun. Now, you'll may, you may notice this pile of amazing things behind me. Now, what are these? My gosh, what is this stuff? Look at this. Well, many of you know that before I was a writer in live action, I was a writer in animation when I was in my early 20s. And these are, and, and there's many, many more of these. I wrote a ton of scripts. These are scripts that I wrote. And usually what I would do is I would save the premise, the outline, the various drafts of the script. Look at this. Uh, in many cases, storyboards, concept art. So, for instance, so we're going to do different time capsules relating to each show. So there will be a He-Man and the Masters of the Universe time capsule with the scripts that I wrote for He-Man and all the supporting materials. Uh, these will be PDFs that will be sent to you with a video, an exclusive video of me talking about what it was like to write for He-Man. There'll be another one that's a real Ghostbusters um, uh, uh, time capsule where you'll get the PDF of all the material I wrote, plus the storyboards, plus all sorts of cool stuff. Um, now, now the first show I ever wrote for, when I was like around 22, was... Um, this show. Look at that. Space Ghost. It was, it was a show called Space Stars, and Michael Reeves and I wrote for uh, this final se segment that was called Space Stars Finale. It had Space Ghost. This is actually a cell of Space Ghost with a cell of his spaceship. I put it on this background, and for many years I had it framed. So you'll get a scan of that rarity, and that was ink and paint. So someone, someone drew that on pencil, traced it in ink, and then painted the background. That's ink and paint. That's an original. There it is. And you'll get a scan of that. Um, they'll also now some of you maybe may love shows like The Littles or Pole Position. I wrote a lot of those as well. So if you're a fan of Pole Position, look at this. This is an actual, original, hand painted, hand drawn cell, and we'll scan that and send that to you for, if you order the Pole Position time capsule. Um, then let's see what else we have here. Well, let's pull out. 
one of these Blah, at random. Let's see what it is. But there'll be a real Ghostbusters time capsule, a Smurfs time capsule, because I was one of the first writers that ran on Smurfs. Well, look, here's a 1986 cartoon script. See that? Look at that. And on the table, and I had a table of contents for all these. These are my scripts. I had them bound. And, uh, uh, this has Captain EO, the Alatar incident. This is an outline for a Captain EO TV show that never got made. That was Michael Jackson's character, Captain EO. And then also in this in this volume are my real Ghostbusters scripts. So station identification, lights, camera haunting, Egon on the ra the, the rampage. I also wrote one other one. Um, and uh, and you know here here's you know you can see now some of these are coming out of their binding. But you can see these include. Later drafts, the blue draft, the pink draft. So you'll get to you'll get to see how the story's changed. And now let's see. We also have. Let me see what also is in here, just for information, just to see what we have. And it's outlines, premises, on and on and on. 1983, the Smurfs, Good Neighbor Smurf, is one of this. It includes the premise. Premises were the one-page pitches that we would give to with the companies, and then they'd buy them. Then we then it was the outline, the revised outline, the script and the revised script. So this is pretty amazing. So you'll get everything I wrote for Smurfs, everything I wrote for He-Man, if you choose those those ones. And if people are fans of the Littles or, or um, you know, the Centurions, that would be another one. So that each show, it'll be a different um, uh, time capsule and it will be a scan of all that material. And uh, here's the Incredible Hulk, when I wrote for the animated Incredible Hulk. Look at that. There it is. There's, that's what the scripts look like. And that came out of my brain onto this page. And every every animated script I wrote got made. So it's, uh, let's see what this is. We're just taking a stroll through time here. Okay, this is uh, a, a feature that I wrote for the Littles that uh, was called, um, it was called Liberty and the Littles. And it got aired as a holiday special. And these, if you look closely here, these are the character drawings. You'll get copies of those PDFs of those character drawings, uh, set sketches. I mean, this is all stuff that there's nowhere else you can get it on Earth. And uh, look at this props, props, and characters. Look at that. Amazing. And again, this was all drawn by hand at the time. It was This was before computers. This is before all of that stuff. All hand-drawn, ink and paint, cells. And, and these were companies with the artists, often here in Los Angeles. And, it, it, you know, so you'll, you'll, these are some of the things you'll get. Let's see, I'm looking for, you know, the, here's, um, this is Space Star. So this is the one with Space Ghost. These are storyboards. If you can see these, these are the storyboards that they used to, they, the artists would draw them. And this is what, well, this would guide the animators. So you would get scans of all of this stuff. Again, where else can you possibly, possibly get this? So then also, many of you know that I'm the author of the Twilight Zone Companion. But what you don't know, is that I also wrote two scripts for The Twilight Zone when they brought the show back in the late 80s. Now, these scripts were not shot for various production reasons and censorship reasons, but this has the entire... Um, it has it had outlines and scripts, two, two scripts that I wrote. Harlan Ellison read them, and, and uh, George R. R. Martin was on the staff, Rock Neil Bannon, that's where we became friends. So if you wanted this special Twilight Zone... Uh, PDF with me talking about writing for Twilight Zone after I had written the Twilight Zone Companion. This, this, you can get the PDF and the video of me. So that's some of these things. Um, amazing stuff, amazing stuff. And, uh, and you know, if you look at my filmography and there's some shows that I wrote for that you'd like to see in, in one of these time capsules, as you know, I story edited Friday the 13th, the series, uh, was, you know, was on many, many shows. So, uh, but, but these will be definitely made available immediately. Uh, as I say, we want to try to clear one hundred and twenty, one hundred and thirty thousand dollars on Kickstarter or more. You know, I mean, if you, you know, every little bit helps us build sets, get the actors together, do everything we need to do to shoot this and provide it to you. My hope is to shoot all of the entire first season of Space Command this year, and uh, we're cooking along on it. Believe me, <laughs> it's an amazing time. So that's it for now. Um, thanks for everything, guys, and we'll talk really soon. Bye.